All right, I'm going to take you to Colorado, of all places, the center of gun control. Uh, the center of the gun control debate, isn't that interesting? Progressives want Colorado to fold on gun control, and they're doing it. Um, and Colorado used to be a place you could trust uh, until about 10 years ago when George Soros started dumping millions of dollars into the state to flip it. They're doing it to Texas right now. Uh, Colorado's already been flipped and now it's Hollywood East. And the lunacy doesn't stop with the gun bans in Colorado. They uh, have gone full-fledged collective. Big government progressives, communist and, you know, granola-eating, sandal-wearing freaks from California don't care about the individual. They'll pay lip service to the individual, um, but they're designing their perfect little utopia that will fail and, and the way it always does. The actual individual doesn't really come into play in these utopias. Um, we know this to be true because in the collectivist system, someone has to suffer in order to make others happy. For instance, the rich man has to work for and pay for everybody else. Um, you know, or in a case that I'm gonna show you, uh, the person who has been raped, get over it. it this, what, they're, what we are currently doing goes against everything this country was founded on. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Not for the collective, but for the individual. Collectives can't talk about that. That's why they have to destroy the Constitution or just get you to not pay attention to it anymore. Because it reveals the dark side of their you've promised utopia. And that is suffering for somebody and suffering eventually for everybody. Ask the rape survivors who are being told they don't need to arm themselves. They just need to be in a safe zone. Carry a whistle. We had Amanda Collins on this program last week and, um, and here's what she said about her rape and that argument. One thing that wasn't mentioned in my story is that I was less than a hundred feet away from the the door of the police station for the university campus. Their offices had closed for the evening. It was late at night. No one was there. So it, it's nice that I was in a safe zone, but my attacker didn't care that I was in a safe zone. And I was left defenseless. I, I was denied the one equalizing factor that I had when I was met up against a man who is much larger than me, and you touched on that. That, I mean, women are just physically un matched. unmatched. Yeah. And a firearm is the one equalizing factor. And there's a lot of hypotheticals being thrown out there of, well, what if this happens, and what if that happens? Well, I'm talking about reality. This is what I lived, this is my life. And this is what I live with every day to move forward. You hear that? This is my life. This is what happened to me. Now, is she being selfish? She was a concealed carry owner, but she wasn't allowed to carry her gun on campus. She told me last week, she said, if I had my gun, I could have prevented the rape, I know. Well, she recently testified. She left here and she went in front of the local politicians in Colorado. And she said, look, I have a right to protect myself, and so do others on campus. She told her, she told them the same story that she told here. But unlike our response here, this was the response from legislators in Colorado. Thank you for sharing your story. Hmm. Very, very um, unsettling story. I just want to say that Actually, statistics are not on your side, even if you had had a gun. Hmm. Statistics are not on your side. See, we're not interested in the individual. We're interested in the collective. Statistics are not on your side, sweetie. So, no. Now, if you think that's bad, listen to what the Republican then said. What we are trying to do here tonight is protect students and teachers from feeling uncomfortable right by you carrying a gun to protect yourself right. we're not trying to stop violent Every crime that has come up so he, he goes on and there's an argument in uh, uh, amongst my staff and we've reached this clown we tried to reach this clown today and ask him what do you mean by that 
Because there's an argument in the in the with the staff on was he was he saying hey we're being really bad here or was he saying we don't really care we're not trying to stop violent crime. S staff is split half and half. But either way you look at it, he's not standing up for her rights. He's not saying this is insane, and that's what people should be saying. First, we have Joe Salazar saying women are too emotionally unstable to have guns. Then statistics show that you can't do anything about it anyway. The collective mentality is taking over. Forget the individual. What's best for the collective? That's the problem. That's people like Amanda Collins. And soon you, God forbid, get robbed of their rights and the collective government takes hold. That collective government has led to disaster every time. But statistics only show, uh, you know, six million Jews in Germany. Uh, statistics only show uh, about 30 million in Russia. Statistics only show about 80 million in China. So it's no big deal. Statistics, you know, probably won't be you. We start down that road of the collective and then we go chasing after that bright light like a fly right into the flame. America is hemorrhaging. And some of us have seen the hemorrhaging and we, we grab a, a coat or a blanket and we're down and we're on the ground and what do you do every time you push something onto the wound to stop the bleeding? You don't even have a tourniquet. You just push something down on the ruin. If you've seen this in a movie where there's a body bleeding to death, what do they do? And they're like, <laughs> and they're gurgling. That's what America's doing right now. She's down on the ground. She's gurgling. We've got our hand on the wound, some of us. And what do they always say? Because this is where we're at, gang. In that movie scene, what do they always say? They say, stay with me. Stay with me. Talk to me. Don't close your eyes. Don't go to sleep. Wake up. Wake up. Stay with me. When it gets to that part in the movie, and that person usually dies. And their eyes are rolling back in their heads. In our case, Lady Liberty in critical condition. But it doesn't have to end that way. I beg of you. I used to say, I don't know what to do with the schools. I don't know what to do with my kids. I'm telling you, get your kids out of these schools. They're indoctrination camps. They're turning our kids against us. They're turning our kids against all of the values that we ever held. They're wounding them even further. There's nothing more important than our kids. The concept that the individual is greater than the collective and they are learning the exact opposite in school. Sadly, we have forgotten this. But I told you at the beginning of the show, strangely, there's good news in this. I'm a recovering alcoholic, so I look at things differently. The last time I was on the board, on the floor, I think God had, God had his jacket on my chest as I was hemorrhaging to death. And he said, stay with me, stay with me. And so I look at things differently because I've been down on the floor before. And I realize that when you're down on the floor, because that's where I feel like I am today, too. You know, when the government says they can use drones and just kill us without a warrant or a trial. My gosh. America certainly is dead. Which means I, I've, I've lost, and maybe you're better off than I am. I've, I've lost faith in my government. I've lost faith in the media, in banking, the justice system some of our big city police departments, everything I'm supposed to, everything I did have faith in, I, mean, I think I just didn't have faith in the DMV about 15 years ago. Now I question everything. I don't have faith in any of it. 
And as I said this this morning to myself, I realized I'm not supposed to. That's the good news. I'm not supposed to have faith in any of those things. George Washington told us not to have trust and faith in any of those things. Just when I think we're not going to make it, because I've given up and surrendered, I remember that surrender is an important way of winning. Surrender. You're powerless over it, and you are. We're powerless over anything that happens in Washington. And so what do you do? You try to make amends for the things that you've done wrong. You try to live differently. You take an inventory. And then you take control of the things you can, and you work hardest on those. And you realize that even those are going to fall apart on you from time to time, but it doesn't matter. You do your best. Just as I don't have faith in anything, my faith grows in my family. And in God. I raise my kids and make sure I'm listening as closely as I can. This is where we're supposed to be. Faithless in everything that man has created and putting our faith and our time and our energy into everything that God has created.